Hello, my name is Melissa Azouri and I'm a PhD candidate at NXP Semiconductors Germany and UCL Belgium. In this video, we we'll present our work titled on the worst case side channel security of ECC point randomization in embedded devices. This is joint work with Francois Jorvaux from CDEX Insight and UCL, Romain Poussier from NTU, Professor Francois Xavier Standard from UCL, and Costas Papagianopoulos and Vincent Vernay from NXP Semiconductors. So first, as an introduction, I will describe the motivation behind this work. So the main operation elliptic curve crypto is the elliptic curve scalar multiplication, called DCSM for short. And many attacks have been published that use only a single side channel trace to recover the secret scalar used in the ECSM. Usually, this implies that to protect the ECSM, we require strong and maybe even a combination of strong countermeasures. For instance, point randomization is a necessary countermeasure to protect ECC implementations against DPA-like attacks that make use of the knowledge of the input point. So in this work, we present the first analysis of the point randomization countermeasure against worst-case side-channel attackers. So to make this talk easy to follow, we will stick to the following plan. So first, I will go over the context of our evaluation by describing an example of how point randomization can be implemented in practice and which attack vectors were identified to evaluate it. Then I will explicitly state the research questions we answer in this work, uh, which correspond to our main contributions and describe the tools we use to answer them. These questions mainly relate to comparing different attack vectors, evaluating the necessary side channel noise for point randomization to achieve reasonable security, with analysis the practical security of point randomization on a concrete device, and we extrapolate these results to more difficult to analyze implementations from a worst case security perspective. So first we will start with a bit of background. The ECSM takes as input a secret scalar K and a possibly public point P, which can be, for example, the elliptic curve base point. With the knowledge of P, DPA-like attacks can be applied on the ECSM. For example, the one presented at CHESS 2017 by Poussier. Uh, but these attacks can be hindered by employing the point randomization countermeasure, which randomizes the input point P into a point P prime by using a different elliptic curve representation and also a randomly generated secret value lambda. For example, we can move to a homogeneous projective coordinate system from an affine one. So each point XY from the elliptic curve can be randomized as lambda X lambda y lambda as the third coordinate of the homogeneous projective coordinate system. So the main operation in point randomization is a field multiplication. So in order to break the point randomization and recover the randomized point, or equivalently the secret lambda, and be able to apply a DPA-like attack on the following ECSM, the attacker needs to recover lambda from the leakage of the field multiplication of lambda by the known coordinate x, and this used in a single trace. So in the following, we will take a um, very simple example of a multi-precision schoolbook multiplication followed by an independent modular reduction because it will be very useful to showcase the differences between the attack vectors and also the reasons behind these differences. So to explain the attack vectors, we take the example of an elliptic curve defined over a field where the elements are on 256 bits, which means that on an 8-bit device, lambda and x consists of 32 words each. So in order to multiply lambda by x, we compute all the cross products using single precision multiplications, which are accumulated to get the 64 word result. And then this result is reduced modulus q. So from this abstract architecture of a field multiplication, we can identify different attacks that exploit different amounts of information for a varying degree of simplicity. So first, a horizontal divide and conquer attack. So this attack exploits the leakage related to each word of lambda independently. So it can only exploit the leakage on the cross products and it will target each word of lambda in the same way and then combine the, re uh, the results from the different attacks. Then the other option to exploit more information is to apply a belief propagation based attack, or also called a soft analytical side channel attack, which was introduced by Vera Chavion et al. at Asia Crypt 2014 on the full field multiplication. 
this is due to the fact that the intermediates that are present in the accumulation and the modular reduction steps cannot be exploited by divide and conquer adversaries since they depend on multiple words of lambda. So how do uh, these bleak propagation attacks work? So first they require to build a factor graph, which is a graphical representation of the target computation. So here are field multiplication. And factor graphs are bipartite graphs, which contain the input, output and intermediate variables, and the factors which also encode the relations between the variables in the graph. So this is very similar to a system of equations. Then side channel information is added to the graph to each Deakin uh, variable, and the belief propagation algorithm is then used to apply uh, to propagate the information throughout the graph to all the variables. In the next part of this presentation, I will explicitly describe the research questions and the tools we use to answer them. So as discussed in the previous part, we identified two attacks, a simpler horizontal divide and conquer attack and a more complex belief propagation based attack. So the first question relates to the gain that time consuming belief propagation based attacks provide in this case of point randomization in comparison to divide and conquer attacks, which can be easily enhanced with enumeration and possibly at a lower time complexity than a belief propagation attack. The second question requires a quantitative analysis of the side channel noise levels required to protect the point randomization against nearly worst case adversaries. The third contribution in this work is concerned with how much security we can expect in practice from point randomization on common embedded devices. And finally, some, since some targets are more difficult to analyze, for example, due to larger data paths, which makes side channel information extraction and exploitation more time consuming, we explored the idea of possibly using some shortcuts to lower bound the security of these targets and thus providing guarantees on their worst case security. So regarding the tools we used to answer the previous questions, so for more quantitative analysis, we use the concrete attacks previously described, accompanied with corresponding security graphs or security metric probability distributions. But when a more qualitative or comparative analysis is required, we use the recently introduced local random probing model, uh, which is dubbed Alia PM for short by Go et al. And concretely what the LRPM does or what it can be used to is to model probability-based side-channel attacks, so including the previously described attack vectors, both the horizontal divide and conquer and SASCA. And the starting point of the LRPM is the same as any SASCA by constructing the factor graph of the implementation, that instead of feeding probability distributions for each intermediate, side-channel information or the mutual information values for short are given to each intermediate. Then code in theory based approximations are used to propagate the amounts of information throughout the graph. Obviously, the RRPM does not perform an attack anymore, but is instead a very efficient tool to provide an upper bound on the information that can be extracted on a secret after an attack. And this can be done in a fraction of the time it takes to perform any attack. So we have identified two attack vectors. So first, a horizontal divide and conquer attack, and second, a much more complex one that is SASCA. It is worth looking at the gain of these belief propagation based attacks in comparison to very efficient divide and conquer attacks, since these can be enhanced with enumeration. So for the purpose of this comparison, we use the LRPM and plot the upper bound on the ME for both a divide and conquer attack and a belief propagation based attack on the point randomization. So there are two variants of the belief propagation attack shown on the right diagram. So first one that only exploits the multi-precision multiplication and the second one that additionally exploits the modular reduction. And based on this analysis and the results provided on the left figure, we can conclude that for low signal to noise ratio, and even for somewhat reasonable signal to noise ratios, the BP attack does not provide a significant gain over a divide and conquer attack. And this in view of its increased time complexity. And this is an interesting result, particularly regarding time constrained evaluation. So these results are due to the nature of the target. So concretely, most of the information comes from the cross products 
and the intermediates from the accumulation and the modular reduction steps do not provide much information when the noise is too low, since they depend on two or more unknown words of lambda. So we have shown that horizontal divide and conquer attacks can approach quite optimally and also efficiently the worst case security of point randomization in the case of high noise or low signal to noise ratio, which is the case we are mostly interest, interested in. This means that we can use it as a tool for evaluations and assess the necessary noise required to make point randomization resistant against worst case single trace attackers. So taking the same previous example of point randomization, we performed multiple simulated horizontal divide and conquer attacks for two different sizes of lambda. On the top figure for 128 bit and the lower one for 256 bits. For both graphs, the red line corresponds to the average logarithm of the guessing entropy, that is the number of remaining bits of entropy to guess on lambda. In blue, we plot the lower bound on the remaining entropy which corresponds to an upper bound on the information extracted by an attacker, and this provided by the model-based analysis using the LRPM. So first we observe that based, uh, based on our analysis, or analysis similar to these, we can clearly pinpoint the signal-to-noise ratio at which the countermeasure provides a set security level. These, uh, these analysis do allow to highlight any possible randomness security trade-off, from uh, saving some randomness on lambda. And additionally, we can see that the LRPM allows to nicely and efficiently bound the security level and specifically uh, for uh, low signal to noise ratios. Next, we take a look at the practical security that can be achieved on a real device. So for this case, we considered uh, point randomization implemented as before in assembly on an 8-bit AVR microcontroller. However, we considered two examples for the concrete multiplication in assembly. So first, a naive school book multiplication with no specific optimization. And then we considered the operand cache multiplication of Hutter et al, uh, which is optimized to reduce the number of memory operations as they are the most expensive on the considered device. So we performed the single trace horizontal divide and conquer attack on our acquired traces for both the school book and the operand caching assembly implementations. And on this slide, we show the distribution of the remaining entropy for a lambda of 128 bits, and the red vertical line corresponds to the average. So first we notice that different leakage points on the traces lead to drastically different single to noise ratios and thus to, side ch to different uh, side channel informations. Notably, uh, we notice that the loads lead to most of the side channel information. And this is made very clear by the very large difference between uh, the average remaining entropy of the classical school book multiplication and the operand caching multiplication. So the classical school book leads to mostly easily numerable lambdas, Whereas for the operand caching, it is very unlikely to recover lambda with reasonable enumeration, since the average remaining entropy is 100 bits. The interesting conclusions are due to the fact that this attack can only be done in a single trace, and that by using some optimizations, and also um, that also improve efficient, the efficiency of the point randomization, we can reduce the leakage up to the point where point randomization can be implemented securely even on these small devices that are typically considered as insecure, and also in software. So, so far we have compared different attack vectors. We have shown results for theoretical and model-based analysis, simulated and also concrete attacks. However, some targets are harder to evaluate with respect to worst case attacks. Some attack strategies can be simplified, but this comes at the cost of a significant information loss and is no longer worst case. However, since we have shown that the LRPM can be used to bound the security based on our combined analysis, it can also be used to analyze other implementations and provide very fast evaluations. So for instance, in the case of 32-bit implementations, which would require exploiting probability distributions of two to the 32 elements for each intermediate, we can perform LRPM-based evaluations and obtain a lower bound on the security. So the conclusions here again are similar to the previous case. For uh, First, for very high noise, 
the BP uh, based attacks do not provide a significant gain over divide and conquer attacks, but then the gap is much larger for higher signal to noise ratios, uh, which is similar to the previous case, but at these levels anyway there is no security to be expected. And this shows again that uh, at least the point randomization can be implemented quite securely to withstand even the worst, worst case attackers trying to exploit all the available side channel information. Next, I would like to conclude this talk by going over the main conclusions from this work. So first, in the case of point randomization, it is clear that uh, belief propagation attacks achieve similar results to a divide and conquer attacks for uh, very low SNRs. Uh, at least for the case that we investigated, and this is mainly due to the nature of the target. So lambda, since lambda is a random ephemeral value, it can only be observed through a single trace. Then we have shown through the different kinds of analysis that we performed that point randomization can be implemented securely on small devices, but only if adequate optimizations and consideration for side channel attacks are taken into account. In, uh, interestingly, we also show uh, by comparing LRPM results and concrete attack results that the LRPM can quite accurately and very efficiently bound the security of uh, evaluated implementations. I would also like to mention some of the additional contributions that I did not discuss in this talk, but are detailed in the paper. So in practice, we analyzed belief propagation applied to the point randomization, and we compare different factor graph constructions to find the optimal one to apply belief propagation. We also extended the LRPM to operations with multiple outputs, since it was only applied to block ciphers before, where all atomic operations have only a single output. Additionally, we compared homogeneous and Jacobian coordinate systems with respect to the security of the point randomization countermeasure. For future work, I would like to note that the systematic analysis of the security of ECC implementations against worst case attackers is a new topic open for research. And in this work, we took an implementation example that allowed us to investigate and exhibit quite clearly our conclusions and intuitively explain the causes behind them. However, there are many different options to implement elliptic curve crypto on embedded devices. So one can consider a different multiplication algorithm uh, like Karatsuba, or even a different modular multiplication algorithm like the Montgomery modular multiplication. And finally, belief propagation attacks are a new topic that is worth investigating in order to speed up worst case side channel evaluations. That concludes my talk. Thank you very much for listening and have a nice day.